Okay, guys, I got a bolt race through this. Here's the first thing you're going to do. Um, solving the greater than or less than problems. So you have that one sheet, um, first off, number line. And make sure the X is covered with a 1. That's the only X I have in the problem, so I'm going to dot it. It is positive, so that sign will go the same way. Now, outside, you got a plus 5, so we need to minus 5, minus 5. So I have 1 dot X the sign, and then negative 13 minus 5 is negative 18. Okay, now I can divide by my 1, and after I divide, I want to put my stuff down here. So I have x, and negative 18 divided by 1 is negative 18. Okay, negative 18 is a critical number. Circle, you're not going to fill it in because there's no line, and the nose goes that way. Okay, next problem, negative 3x is greater than 27, so my line... Okay, my x has a th negative 3 in front of it. That's the only x I have, so dot it and circle it. And we have a negative multiplying number, so we need to switch that sign to the other way. Okay, so we need to divide. Now, there's no plus or minus outside, so we just divide by negative 3. So I have x, and then the sign flips, and 27 divided by negative 3 is negative 9. Okay, so negative 9 is my critical number. Circle, line's not there, so don't fill it in, and it goes that way. Okay, my next problem, um, let's get a fraction here with the 5 so that it matches. Now, the question is if the number under the x is positive or negative. Well, it's positive, so we're not. We're going to leave the sign alone. It's going to go the same way. And then I cross multiply and divide, so I'm going to take 2 times 5 divided by 10. Or, sorry, my bad, 2 times 5 divided by 1. And that's 10. So I have x over here and then 10. Okay, so my critical number is 10. Circle it. The line's there, so fill it in. And then the nose goes this way. Okay, number 4. There's x covered by a 2. It's the only x I have, so I dot it and circle it, and it's positive, so that sign's going to be the same. Okay, now outside the 2 dot x, we got plus 11, so I need to minus 11, and then from 25, so 2 dot x, the sign, and 25 minus 11 is 14. And then I divide. Okay, so I have x, the sign, and then 7. Okay, so 7, circle, the line's not there, so we're going to go this direction with it. That's my answer. Okay, 1 plus negative 3x is less than or equal to negative 14 plus 2x, so the line. And my x is, both of them are covered with a negative 3 and a 2, but I can't have two of them. Okay, well, they're on opposite sides. So I need to switch the right to the opposite. So it's plus 2x, so I'm going to minus 2x. And I would do that from the negative 3x. So I have 1. Negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5. So plus negative 5x, and then the sign, and then negative 14. Okay, now that I only have a solo x, we can dot and circle it. And it's negative, so we need to have that sign go the other direction. Okay, now outside that you have a plus 1, or 1 plus. It's positive 1, so we're going to subtract it, and then subtract it. So I have negative 5 dot x, the sign, and then negative 14 minus 1 is negative 15. Okay, so now we divide by negative 5. So I have x, the sign switches, and then I have 3. Okay, so my critical number is 3. Circle it. The bar is there, so fill it in. And the nose goes that way. Okay, now my next problem. There's two signs, so that means we need to find two numbers. Okay. So my x has a negative 3 in front of it. And that's the only x I have, so dot it and circle it. And the signs, both of them, need to switch direction. Okay. And in between, we need to get x by itself. So I'm going to ignore these two. And I have a plus 9, so I'm going to have to minus 9 from everything. Okay, so I minus 9. 
And I also need to minus 9 then from this side and this side. Okay, so that cancels out. Negative 3 minus 9 is negative 12. The sine, negative 3 dot x, the sine, and then actually switch that 11 to a 12. I want to make that a 12. I don't want that as an 11. So 12 minus 9 is 3. Okay, now I go ahead and divide. Okay, divide by negative 3, but we got to divide that and that by negative 3. Okay, so that gives me 4 now. Negative 3, 12 divided by negative 3. The sign switches, I have x, and then 3 divided by negative 3 is negative 1. Okay, so I've got 4, negative 1. Don't fill them in, just connect them. Okay, graphing. Here's the y, here's the x. They're on opposite sides. So if they're on opposite sides, we want to use the slope and the y-intercept method. Okay. So the slope is what's in front of the x. In this instance, it's a 2, but the slope always needs to be a fraction, so we're going to put 2 over 1. And then the plus 3 is my y-intercept. Okay, so plus 3, it means just go straight up 3 because this is the y-axis. So 1, 2, 3. Okay, and then from that point, from this point here, we go up or down. We're going to go up because it's positive, and we always go to the right. So up 2, right 1. Okay, go ahead and make your line. And now you have to do your true-false. The best point to use is the 0 and 0. Okay, so let's get that y out of there. No number in front, so it's just 0. Let's get that x out of there after we put it in a parentheses and then put 0. So what do I have? I have 0. I have my sine. I have 2. I have a parentheses with 0 inside and then plus 3. Okay, so I have 0. And then 2 times 0 plus 3. Well, it's 3. Okay, now 0 is smaller, so the nose should be pointing this towards this number, but it's not. So that's a false. So I put F on this side and true on that side. Okay, number 8. 3x minus 2y is less than or equal to 12. Okay, so I'm looking through that. Um, this time the x and the y are on the same side. Same, okay. So we want to use the table with the double zeros, x and y intercept table. So I write my first equation, 3x minus 2y equals 12, and then copy it down again. Okay, so x is 0, we can eliminate 3x in, and then dot your negative 2y, and then I can divide by negative 2. So 12 divided by negative 2 is negative 6. Then if y is 0, I can eliminate my 2y. And 12 divided by 3 is 4. Okay, so remember the x is this way. This is the x, this is the y. Okay, so the x is sideways. I'm going to stay and then go to the right. And the y is up and down. This would be down and this would be stay. So I stay 0 and go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then I go right 4 and stay. 1, 2, 3, 4. Make your line. And we need to do our true false because it's a there's an inequality in there. Okay, so here's my point, 0 and 0. Okay, get the x out of there. Let's replace it with 0. And then get your y out of there and replace that with 0. So what do I have now? I have 3 and then parentheses 0, minus 2, parentheses 0, the sine, and then 12. Okay, 3 times 0, is, you can plug that into your calculator. I mean, it's 3 times 0 plus negative 2 times 0. Well, that's 0, okay? So this side is 0, and then I have my sine, and then I have 12. Now, 0 is smaller. 
and this time the nose does point towards a smaller number. Okay, so that's true. So T and F. Okay, because here's the zero zero point. That's true. The other one's false. Okay, now you have two equations. We have to solve for x and y. Okay. So I say, do I have a base? I do. Right here is my base. So I box my x up, circle the other side. Okay, now write the other equation. The 2x plus negative 1y equals 5. Now it's the x that's all by itself. So the x gets parentheses, and then we have two emptier parentheses. And then I need to make my parentheses wider. So I empty the parentheses. And then I replace it with what x is equal to, which is 1y plus 3. Okay. So boom, boom. So 2 times 1y is 2y. 2 times 3 is 6. Plus negative 1y equals 5. Okay, the x's are on the same side, so we're going to add them together. Don't switch anything. Okay, 2 plus negative 1 is 1, 1y. And then plus 6 before equaling 5. So I dot minus 6, minus 6, 1 dot y equals negative 1. We don't need to divide by 1, but you can if you want. Negative 1 divided by 1 is negative 1, and that's the y. Okay, then go into your base. Okay, you want to use the base, not the other one. Okay, so let's get rid of this y. And put negative 1. Because I, if I, x is all by itself, then I can just plug this expression into my calculator. So 1 times negative 1 plus 3, and that gives me 2. Okay, next problem. The last problem in this packet. Okay. I don't have a base to this, and there's also no same. Okay, so we got to get our circles drawn, and then I'm going to copy this down, the 6x plus 5y equals 19. That's used to find the second answer. And i got to do the dot, 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 dot. So I have 2 here, so 2, 2, 2, 6 here, 6, 6, 6. So 6x times 2 is 12x, 5y times 2 is 10y, and then 19 times 2 equals 38. 12x plus 18y, and then 5 times 6 is 30. Okay, so now I circle again, and right here I have the same. Make those all negatives. And when you add them, these will add to 0. And then we add 10 to negative 18, that's negative 8y. And then 38 plus negative 30 is 8. Then we divide. And y equals negative 1. Okay, so I have my answer for y. So let's replace the y with negative 1. So 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. And then add your 6x before equaling 19. So dot plus 5 plus 5. So 6 dot x equals 24. Divide by 6. And 24 divided by 6 is 4. Okay, put that one to the side, and story problems, I told you if there's two units, it says two units, so we know we're going this route. Currently I have $400. I'm going to save money at a rate of $50 per month. How many months will it be before I have $1,000? So I've got money, that's Y, I put there, and I've got months, and that's X. So per, remember to put the X beneath it and the other unit above it. Okay, $50 per month, so we know that's 50. Y, M, X, Y, and we know that M is 50. Now, we always get rid of this first Y because the initial amount before 50 was 400. Okay, so the equation is 400 plus 50X equals Y, and then we're going to put $1,000 in for the right letter, and that's going to be Y. Okay, so let's just scribble out the y. There's nothing in front of it. I don't need a parentheses. And now I need to get the x by itself. So I dot and circle it. I'm minus 400 
minus 400, so 50 dot x equals 600, divide by 50, divide by 50, and that's 12. Okay. If you're wondering about the label, it's x, so x is months, so 12 months. Okay, next one, number two. I already have money in a bank account. I'm going to save $100 per month. After five months, I plan to have $2,000. How much should I plan to have after 12 months? So two units again. Okay, so I've got money. That's Y. And then months. That's X. And then per. Dollars on top. Months on bottom. Okay, dollars per month is a hundred, so a hundred dollars. Okay. So Y, M, X, and Y. So out with that M and put a hundred in. Okay. Okay, now the initial amount, there's nothing I have I see come before the hundred, but I had some money to begin with. So if I don't have I don't see that initial amount, I gotta use my Y equals M dot X plus B formula. So I'm going to need a combo to go with that. they got to be in the same sentence. Five months, comma, I plan to have $2,000. So that'll work. Five months and $2,000. Okay, and these three help me find the B. We get rid of these letters here. I know the M is 100. And five months, months is X. And the money's Y. So we're going to put 2,000 in for the Y. And then dot 5. Okay, so I need to take 100 times 5. That's 500. So we have 2,000 equals 500 plus B. I put a 1 in front of the B, circle it, and I get rid of the 500 because that's what's the 2,000s on the other side of the equation. So we got a minus 500. Okay, 2,000 minus 500 is 1,500 equals 1 dot B. Now, I don't need to divide by 1 because it's still going to be 1,500. Okay, so I have my equation. I have 1,500 plus 100X equals Y. And I would put 12 months in for the right letter, and months is X. Okay, so here's X. We need to put it in parentheses and put 12. Okay, I need to punch that into my calculator then because the Y needs to be solved for, but it's by itself. So I can punch in 1,500 plus 100 times 12, and I get 20, whoops, sorry, 1,500 plus 100 times 12. I got 2,700, okay? Next problem. I have money in my savings account, and I'm going to save more money at a constant rate each month. After three months, I intend to have $3,600. After five months, I intend to have $4,800. After how many months will I have saved $8,000? So again, two units. And those two units are the months, which is represented by the X variable, and the dollars, which is represented by the Y variable. So per dollars per month. But on this one, it never tells me the dollars I save each month or per month, so I have to use Y minus Y, X minus X when I don't know that. Now remember, the Y is dollars and the X is months. Okay, so dollars. I got 30, let's pick the first two I see, 3,600 and 4,800. So 3,600 minus 4,800. And in the meantime, 3 minus 5. So that gives you negative 1,200, and this is negative 2 on bottom. So then I divide, and that equals 600. So $600 per month. Okay, so on the line, I've got Y, M, X, Y. So I know the M is 600. Okay, now I have no way I know in the beginning amount unless I use the Y equals M dot X plus B with my combo for X and Y. 
they got to be in the same sentence. Let's go with three months, comma, I have 3,600. So that'll work. They're in the same sentence. Okay, so months. Here's months. That's equal to X, and then I have Y. So get rid of these three things. M is 600. And then I'm going to put 3,600 for Y, and then times 3, dot 3. Okay, so 600 times 3 is 1,800. So I have 3,600 equals 1,800 plus B. Put a 1 in front, circle it. And then we're going to need to minus the 1,800. Okay, 3,600 minus 1,800 is 1,800 equals 1 dot B. Now, I don't need to divide if it's a 1. So I have 1,800 at the beginning. Okay, so now I know my equation. I write 1,800 plus 600X equals Y. And I'm going to want to put $8,000 in for y. Okay, so let's get rid of the y and put 8,000. Now I got to get that x by itself, so I need to dot it and circle it. First we subtract 1,800. Let's get all the non-x's together. Okay, that's going to be 6,200. So 600.x 600 equals 6,200, and now I divide. Okay, that's going to divide by that is 10.3 repeating. Okay, and the X is months, so it's between 10 and 11 months, but 10.3 works. Okay, number four. I earn $8 per hour as a lifeguard, $9 per hour as a cashier. Last week I earned a total of $430. If I worked 20 hours as a lifeguard, how many hours did I work as a cashier? So three units. Now we set up our map. Okay, so total, total, put a dollar sign above that one. The dollars for a single, and then how many, same as we always have. And then I have lifeguard, I put LG and cashier, C-A-S-H. Okay, the total money amount is $430. It says one total cost, so $430. Okay, remember, this is for non-money amounts. And the only non-money amount I have is 20. Now read the sentence. I work 20 hours as a lifeguard. So we're going to put the 20 here. And this is going to be X because it's unknown. And I don't need this box here to hold any numbers. Okay, and then dollars. Well, $8 as a lifeguard. $9 as a cashier. We never need, have never have needed that box once. So, I'm out of numbers, so I take 20 times 8, and that's 160, no letter needed, and then that's 9x. So, I have 160 plus 9x equals 430. So, I dot the x, minus 160. So, 9 dot x equals 270, and then I divide by 9, and that's 30. Okay, so it's... 30 hours of 30 cashier, okay? All right, next one. A farmer's market is selling apples for $1.99 per pound and oranges for $1.50 per pound. The market sells 12 pounds of fruit. The total amount of money made is $21.92. How many pounds of apples, how many pounds of oranges were bought? There's three units, so we go back to our table. Total. Total, put a dollar sign there, money single, and then how many apples and oranges, so A and O. Okay, one total cost, and we know that's 21.92. Okay, how many? This is for non-money amounts, okay? So... 12 is the only one, but it says 12 pounds of fruit. Can I put that under apples or oranges? No, it's neither one. It doesn't say it, so we have to use this box to hold the 12. This is X. This is Y. Okay, don't need that. Now, money amounts. Okay, $1.99, that's for the apples, and $1.50 is for the oranges. Okay, so X times $1.99 would be $1.99X, and that would be $1.50Y. 
So I, I have two different letters. So this is one equation. And the other one, look in the top row. That's your other one. So go like this. Okay, so x plus y equals 12. I'm going to put 1s in front of those. And then $1.99x plus $1.50y equals 21.92. Okay, there's no base. So I'm going to write that top one down here because I'm going to need that later. So circle the x's. And these aren't the same and these aren't the same. So I also have no same coefficient. So I go dot, 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 dot. So I have 1.99. 1.99 and 1.99. 1, 1, 1. Okay, so I multiply. $1.99, 1.99x plus 1.99y. And then 12 times $1.99 is 23.88. Bottom, 1.99x plus 1.50y. And then 21.92. Okay, now I actually have somewhere where I have the same right here, but they can't both be positive, so we need to change the signs. Okay, and that will add to zero. Add these, you'll get 0 0.49 positive. Add these, you'll get 1.96 positive, and then I divide. And y is going to equal 4. Okay, so. Y is under the oranges, so I have 4 pounds of oranges. And now I just replace the Y with 4. Okay, 1 times 4 is 4, plus 1X equals 12. Minus 4, minus 4. 1 dot X is going to equal 8, and that's my answer. I don't. I, you can divide by 1 if you want. You don't have to. Okay, next one. A store sold 20 hardcover books and 12 paperback books. The hardcover books cost $3.50 more than the paperback books did. The store collects a total of $198. How much does each type of book cost? Again, three units, so back to your table. So total, how many, the money for a single, and the money for total. Okay. Then I have hardcover and paperback. Okay, one total cost, and that total cost is $198. Okay, non-money amounts. 20, 20 hardcover. 12, 12 paperback. And that's a money amount, so I'm not going to use that box. I don't need it to hold anything. Okay, now for money it says 350, but more. So we don't just put 350. We go up here and put x plus 3.50 and x. Now it said the hard covers cost 350 more. So x plus three dollars and fifty cents has to be our hard cover, and then the x is the paperback. So it's 12x. Put a one in front, and you do that, and that means you times. Okay. So 20 times 1x is 20x, and then 20 times 3.50 is 70. Okay, now we have the same letter. They're both x's, so we're going to just add those together. 20 plus 12 is 32x, and then plus your 70 equals 198. Now dot your x, circle it, so minus 70. So 32 dot x equals 128, and then divide by 32. Okay, that equals 4. Okay, so I know that I have an answer of 4, and my solo x is right here. So it's the paperbacks that are $4. So that's 4, and then 4 plus 3.50 is 7.50. Okay, last problem, finally. A sports equipment store is having a sale on soccer balls. One soccer coach purchases 12 balls in two bags for a total of $155. Another coach purchases 12 balls in three bags for a total of $189. Find the cost of a ball and the cost of a bag. Okay, three units again. So total, total, money, how many? 
single. And the two things I'm buying are the balls and the bags. Okay, two total costs. Well, 155 is one of them, and 189 is the other. Okay, non-dollar amounts. Well, that's 10 balls. That's two bags. That's 12 balls. That's three bags. All right, so we really don't need that box. We don't need this one, but this is for money, and there are no other money amounts, so these are X and X, Y and Y. So it's going to be 10X and 12X and 2Y and 3Y. So it's easy to find the two equations here and here. And I have 10X plus 2Y equals 155, and 12X plus 3Y equals 189. Okay, there's no base, so we're going to write 10x plus 2y equals 155, so circle the x's, and there's also no same. So go dot, 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 so 12, so 12, 12, and 12, 10, 10, 10, and 10. Okay, so 10 times 12 is 120 with x. 2 times 12 is 24 with y, and then 155 times 12 is 1860. Okay, now on bottom, they all, you're going to get 120x plus 30y, and then that's 1890. Okay, now I have the same right here. So make them all negatives. And those add to 0, and that's negative 6y. And that's negative 30. So I divide by negative 6, and that is 5. Okay. So here's my Y. It's under the bags. So it costs $5 for the bags. So 5. All right, 2 times 5 is 10, plus 10X equals 155. Okay, so I dot my X and circle it, minus 10, minus 10. So 10 dot x equals 145, and then divide by 10, and x is 14.5, so 14.50.